today it's really a celebration of your achievements, which I'm so excited to be part of. You started the YSP probably kind of being a little apprehensive. What did you get myself into? Who's Sandra? Who's Graham? Who's Jacob? What are these crazy people at BMSIS? What are they going to get us to do? And I'm not really comfortable with the topic I'm researching. A lot of this stuff is new. And now you're going to give a talk about the expertise you gained over the in three months, which is, you know, pat yourself on the back. It's difficult to gain new knowledge and become comfortable enough with it to give a presentation. And so congratulations to all of you for a busy summer. I know how hard you worked. I spoke to several of the mentors. I've read all the wonderful comments you put in the uh, ethics channel. Thank you so much, Jacob, for leading an incredible conversation that was really, I think, insightful to a lot of us. Graham, of course, your help was insurmountable to making this YSP an incredible success. So a lot of kudos um, go to you. The Young Scientist program is more than just you know, a research internship. I find that it is a fine foundation for scientific citizenship. And what I mean by that is that not all of you will become researchers, you know, and that's completely okay. Many of you will go into education, into business, into the service industry. Hopefully many of you will go into the science as well. And, but having the ability to think like a scientist, to not take everything that's given to you for granted, to question some of the assumptions about the things you learn, to break down a complicated problem into small pieces, to be able to build it back up. And through the ethics program, to realize that not everybody thinks the way we do that other people based on their cultural upbringings and beliefs just think about the world differently. And that's incredible. Having a conversation with those people helps you reflect on your own beliefs. And uh, some, some topics are just, it is no right answer. And uh, the conversation about whaling, hopefully uh, that became clear to you. And there's a lot of value in just saying nothing and listening. I think listening is the hardest thing to do, yet it's the easiest, right? And just listen. Even when you disagree, just listen, it's okay. There's always this, this, this reflex to want to argue back, but sometimes the hardest thing is just to listen. And I hope by reading all the incredible comments that your colleagues put in the ethics channel, um, that became clear as well. Um, your career is your journey. Um, hopefully the foundations you received for the YSP will have opened up new ideas, new opportunities. You've made new friends, you've met new colleagues. Uh, you found new ideas, and with that, you will spread your wings after the YSP is over and continue your, your amazing journey. In this world of TikTok and YouTube, and there is this, I think, societal pressure to be loud about ourselves, about what we do, about our achievements in order to reach the, the next thing. Um, but what I want to convey here is that that's not necessarily the only way that you can be successful and feel good about what you're doing. Um, so fight the temptation to make it about, about you, about yourself. Uh, one of my favorite authors is uh, Barbara Ward. She wrote extensively in the 60s and 70s. She passed away, I think, in 1981. And she lived through some of the toughest times of, of humanity. Uh, she was working in London when the city was bombed. She was present, not present, but like lived through the... the what was it called? The uh, mutual destruction threats of the Cold War, uh, attended the Nuremberg trials, and yet she wrote with the most optimistic attitude about humanity, despite living through these tragedies, which is why I really enjoy reading her. And she said the following, which, uh, which reverberated inside me. I would say generosity is the best policy, and that expansion of opportunity sought for the sake of others ends up bringing well-being and expansion to ourself. And I'll speak a little bit about that more during the last time I speak with you during the closing, uh, during my closing talk with Graham. But, but your career is yours, but take people along for the ride. It's, it makes it much more worth it. And also slow down, observe, reflect, and enjoy the moments. Technology, we live in a technological society that has its blessing and its curses, right? The blessing, of course, I think, is that it has undeniably improved our living conditions. But the, the, the curse is that it has disconnected us from the natural environment. I put this picture of this fellow here. This is Alexander Van Humboldt. He was a naturalist. He lived a long life. I think he died in his early 90s. But then he was, when he was young, about all of your ages, in his late 20s, uh, he traveled to South America. So he was there between 1799 
in 1804, so a long time ago. Uh, and he was a very keen observer. He collected plants and beetles and rocks and climbed volcanoes and made measurements about air pressure. In fact, for 30 years, he held the altitude record for a human when he almost made it to the top of Chimborazo volcano in Ecuador. It just was very diligent about making all these observations. And it took him a lifetime to digest all that he saw and wrote down from these five years of travel. In fact, his last book is called Cosmos, <laughs> the same title that Carl Sagan used in his book. And in Cosmos, Humboldt writes about uh, this German term, Germans have a word for everything. <laughs> he talks about Weltanschauung, which means the perception of the universe, this deep realization and what you observe the plants and the animals and the trees and the sky, that everything is interconnected. And humans are very much part of this interconnection. And yet in our technological worlds, we tend to be disconnected from this natural environment. And so the message here is just sometimes just take a step back, slow down, look at the world around you, see that butterfly when you go for a walk, reflect on this interconnection and enjoy those individual moments you have while you're uh, walking in the natural environment. The scientific career and any career for that matter is, is not easy. Like, let's be honest, it's a difficult one. And it's one that you shouldn't go through alone. What makes it possible and fun is a community you build with your respective colleagues, your respective mentors, your respective students. And it's this community that allows you to give, that gives you the energy, I think, to pull you over the long career that, that science can provide. And so as you go away from the YSD and your career takes off, remember that you have a home away from home, right? We are one big scientific family. Uh, some of us in the YSPs uh, keep coming back. My scientific research group is made of former YSPs. I met Jacob and Graham when we were students <laughs> many years ago now, and yet we still work together and we form a close community. Those of you who graduate from the YSP, you will be invited to join the alumni network on LinkedIn. And there are over 150 people there that have gone through what you've, what you've gone through and are there to provide advice and help you as you, uh, in, as you begin your next journey. But today we're celebrating you, your science, your ideas, your discoveries, your enthusiasms, your fears, what you learned, what you were frustrated about. And we're so proud of what you've achieved with us this summer. We know it's a lot of work, um, but uh, oh my goodness, wow. And I think I'm gonna be saying wow quite a bit uh, during the next eight hours that we spend together uh, doing science. So with that, I'm, I thank you all for your enthusiasm this summer. Again, thank you, Graham, Jacob, and others that have made this program so successful. And I wish you all the best. Um.